beyond the last continent on the remote island of Windbark, divers will compete to gather a stone from the bottom of the ocean. An elder from the village will throw it down, and these divers, with the aid of friendly sea turtles and manta rays, will attempt to embark on a long journey to gather the stone. And the person who's able to do so will become the hero of the story in the game Dive. Dive is a board game for one to four players. It takes about 30 minutes to play and it's for ages eight and up with an augmented version you can play with players ages six and up. Dive is by Sit Down Games. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what it comes with and uh, how you play the game. And then Kelly and I will give you our review, whether you want to pick it up and it'll be available down below in the description below. Here we have a setup of the game Dive in a prototype version. We have the ocean board right here with all of the transparent tiles that we will be playing with set up, stacked so we can't quite tell how deep some of the different elements in the ocean are. We have the player boards, there's four different player boards, as well as your diving tokens, your little air tokens right here. We have some screens you can use optionally if you want to better hide what you are bidding on as you play the game, as well as the point tracker for diving throughout the game to get to 23 for winning. And then you can optionally play with the companions as well, little uh, creatures that'll give you a special ability throughout the game. In addition, there is a solo player mode, which you'll use these cards to play with. So in the game Dive, it's fairly simple. Every single player is going to be getting a player board and five of these air bubble tokens. They're going to range from the values of one to five with a front and a back of the basic air bubble and the shark. Give everybody one of these and all five of these. They'll each get to choose, choose a companion if they would like. These companions have their own unique abilities in the game. And if it's your first time playing, go ahead and set these aside and choose to use them at a later date. If you're not playing the solo mode of the game, you can set aside the main chieftain of the village, who you would compete against in the solo mode, along with his token for scoring. And you're going to go ahead and set up all of your tokens, based on the number of players playing, on the zero area of the main point track here. Yes, like Callie said, you're trying to get to 20 23 points and whoever can do that will end the game. Uh, the other way the game will end is if this entire stack here runs out. Give everybody who's playing a player screen and make sure that they hide their player boards. So we'll go ahead and take a look at a two player game of the game dive. So I'll just go ahead and move these aside and I'll go ahead and bring this up a little bit. And if I wanted to, I could give each player a special ability. And, and then I would set aside, of course, the first play, the single player game of uh, a single player mode of the game. And this is what it's going to look like for a, a two player game. You'll have one player here and one player here. This guy's playing with the white chip and this guy's playing with the blue one. So I would only be using this one and this one for scoring. These other two will be set aside as well. To begin the game, it's pretty simple. Players are going to secretly hide their bets on the different levels of the ocean. And you're going to be going up to five levels uh, down the ocean as you place these things. You can choose to place them uh, stacked in any array, uh, in any um, arrangement as you would like, or you can place them one at a time on the board from one all the way down to the lowest area you can go, which is five. Uh, when you're going through this stack here, you're going to be trying to gather sea turtles and manta rays. These will score you one point, two points, or get you to the next closest player in the point scoring total. And as you will do that, it will be based on the level. So for instance, if this player placed these just like this, he would then go ahead and check these after everybody did that as well. And they'll look at the first one and the second one and the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one. And based on the totals, you'll score points. So uh, these players are going to, at the beginning of the game, set their boards up secretly. Once they do that, they will then reveal. Now remember, you can set these up however you like. You can actually reorganize them, you can flip them over, and there's a reason why you're gonna wanna do that. And that is, there are going to be sharks in this ocean. And if a shark pops up and you do not have a shark token selected, you're going to be out that round, which means every single other bet that you made on the board for all the lower levels will be removed. So for instance, if the second sp space here has a shark and you happen to not place the shark version of the token here, then you're out for the rest of these tokens here. So it's very important to remember to check to make sure you can see these sharks. Now, when you look down at this board, you're only gonna be able to see a certain amount of these guys here. So if I 
I take this board up to you guys and show you really closely, you'll see that you can kind of make out the details and you can kind of see what's coming up next, but you're not really too sure, which makes the interesting aspect of the game. I like to call it a guesstimate. <laughs> yeah, you are definitely guesstimating in this game. So uh, players, we'll go ahead and just set this up as the first bet. So round one, they've placed their tokens down and then they've all said, okay, we're ready to go. They remove their screens and they begin. And they'll go, okay, the first layer. Well, he played a one and she played a five. So you'll check that layer and then you'll look at it. You'll go, okay, this layer actually has a sea turtle and it's a red one. You'll look at your board and then you're going to look and see which player has the highest number of token or tokens on that specific area. In this case, this player has five and this player is blue and there is a red sea turtle. So that's going to move them up two points. This player successfully guessed that there was no shark on here. So they will progress and so will this player, but this player won't score any points because they placed a lower value of tokens here. This will then be removed from the game and you'll check the next one. Now you're on level two here and this player put a two, this player put a three. Let's see if there's a shark. Ah, there is there a is. shark. Oh no. And because there's a shark and neither player put a shark token down, then all players are out this round in all subsequent rounds. So all these are out, in which case the round will be over for a two player game in this case. And they're going to score one point for every level they got down, in which case white and blue would score one point each. Mm -hmm. However, let's go ahead and just show a slight example of this. And let's say it looks something like this. And they happen to flip over the shark. And this player did put a four and a shark. Uh, this player will continue, whereas this player will be out for that round. And you'll also check to see if there's any uh, sea turtles or manta rays on this board here. And if there are, you'll actually score points uh, based on the sea turtles and manta rays that would be on here. And the game would actually keep going as long as there's still a player in. And in this case, there would be. So we'd check the next tile and we'd look again. In this case, there's a shark. And this player didn't put a shark token down. So in this case, this player would now be out, scoring this player two points as opposed to the one, whereas this player would have only went one and it would have been out the round. Then after that, every player is going to take all of their tokens off of their boards, set them aside, and then once again, go back to looking at this board here, trying to determine where the sharks are, where the different sea turtles are, and where the manta rays are. And once again, placing their tokens down on the board, they can choose to, like I said, stack them if they would like to try and gain value. So in this case, if they wanted a four in this area, they could put a three and a one, place it there. But they're not going to be able to go all the way down to the fifth level, only to the fourth level. Whereas this player over here, would actually be able to go all the way down to the fifth level, potentially scoring them up to five points if they can make it all the way down without running into a shark, not having that shark token. On your turn, you can also, if you are playing with it, add the companions and choose to use your companion during that round. So the companions each have their own special one-time use ability. For instance, the orca will allow you to do a countdown and only allow all players <laughs> uh, uh, 10 seconds to place their bets. Uh, there's also, an, uh, we can talk about this one here, this is the little angler here, and he actually has two sides, and you can utilize him as an extra additional token in the game, which is cool as well. And there's a ton of different ones Get that will do different... Get down to the sixth level if you can. Yeah, and there's a ton of different types of abilities that you can utilize with your friendly little companions. And that's basically the game. When somebody reaches that 23 point marker, that will trigger the end of the game, the end of the round. You'll tally up all the points once everybody has gone as far as they possibly can go. And then you're going to go ahead and check to see whoever has the most points, and that player will be the winner. And like I said, the other way is if all of these tiles run out, you went ahead and guessed your way all the way to the very end, and nobody still has gotten to 23, in which case the game would then end, and you would just check to see whoever has the most points, and that player would win the game of, of Dive. Pretty, and pretty it's simple. usually about the same amount of time to yeah. go through all the tiles. It's very, very similar. Mm -hmm. So let's come up and review it. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to include Callie in this review because her game Moonshell, a mermaid game, is, is on Kickstarter right now. And this game here shares a lot of similarities as far as theme goes. In this game, you're diving down to the bottom of the ocean. You're attempting to gather a stone. You want to gather that stone before anybody else. And that little score tracker that I showed you before actually shows you like where the stone is. And so that person is able to reach it uh, is going to be the successful hero. It kind of reminds me of like a Moana kind of a feel as well. Yeah, yeah, with um, the different different kind of tribal aspects to the divers, which is great because that's a huge part of history in Polyn Polynesia. Uh, and yeah, I love ocean themes, so this was a lot of fun for me <laughs> to play with that. 
And, and, all the oh, different, and yeah, yeah, and diving down, it seems like, oh, that's kind of a racing game. It kind of is, but not. I wouldn't really call it a racing. It's more of a, a guessing and bidding kind of This game is game. a push-your-luck yeah, kind of push guessing your luck. game mm -hmm. with a bidding aspect as well. Um, and yeah, I, like I said, the artwork is, is excellent. I really like the artwork for this game, and I like the unique mechanics, which we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, the idea of the game is you're trying to determine how far you want to get with the tokens that you have. If you use all five tokens, you can get to the fifth level, but you might not get the items that you want. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that manta ray is worth gathering, and there's also a little small rule I forgot to mention, and that's the manta ray is no longer usable once this you're at this point here, then you cannot push yourself any farther. Once you get into the deep ocean, <laughs> they won't be able to, you won't be able to grab onto a manta ray and and push yourself through uh, but yes yeah, so you're attempting to go as far as you can and gain as much value as you can just because you win a tile doesn't mean you're going to get any points sometimes there are no sea turtles or manta rays on the space i like the thematic connection as well that the sea turtles and the manta rays are kind of helping you out <laughs> helping you dive a little farther <laughs> And yeah, you are basically objectively just trying to gather as many points as possible. Mm -hmm. And that can be an arrangement of either just diving down faster or gathering the right tiles at the right time. And of course, the next little thing that's tricky is the sharks, because you don't know if they're on the first tile, the second, um, or, or maybe they're on the second or the third. Yeah. Like you kind of have an you, idea. You kind of can see, okay, I think it's on the second or the third, but I'm not quite sure which one. And even on the first, it can be hard to tell. I mean, when you're looking at these tiles here, without the <laughs> glare, you, you can see uh, mm -hmm. th them, but you don't know how many there are here. There, you know, there's actually three tiles here, but it seems like maybe there's two, or maybe there's <laughs> four. It's, it's really difficult to kind of really gauge that. Um, and that's what's really unique and interesting about this game. I haven't seen a game that utilizes uh, your eyes visually. Uh, mm -hmm. this, the transparency. Yeah, quite the transparency that way. in this yeah. specific way, which mm -hmm. is which is nice. And then uh, even so, as you gather a little bit more visual knowledge while you're playing the game. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, this is probably the second one. You still have to out your, your opponents. So yeah, part of the game is visual and the other part is having to determine what's more valuable. And you could still be wrong. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. You can absolutely still be wrong. You think you actually have a good idea and then all of a sudden you're, you're totally off and it kills the rest of the points on the board. You can potentially lose uh, almost everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're not smart about it. Well, and it's easier to gauge at the beginning, obviously, than than later and five or four levels down. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, it's much so more usually difficult. everyone's kind of around the same pace and it's not super competitive in that way, which makes a good good family game, I think. There's also certain tiles that will oh, have yeah. actually circles in them, <laughs> so it kind of gives you a gauge on the depths of some of the tiles, but it mm -hmm. can also mess mm -hmm. you up as well. I like these circles, and I like the fact that they're included in the game. Uh, some other really interesting things, too, is they'll add like bits of seaweed on here. There's seaweed, a large octopus. Or even other creatures as well, whales. <laughs> and the only thing that's really important for you to gather is the different mm -hmm. turtles and the manta rays. The rest of the stuff is just there. They exist, but they're not actually there to benefit you in any way. So they're just kind of blocking your sight and making it a little more challenging to see what's mm -hmm. actually underneath all of that good stuff. Which makes sense as you're diving deeper. That's kind of the idea is you're looking down. Um, so all, all that is really, really cool. Uh, the different types of mechanics or different types of uh, companions uh, have unique little like things that you can do with them. For the most part, they were kind of fine, but I didn't really care if I used them or not yeah, as we were playing the game. Yeah, I don't think you really need them. I yeah. mean, you can add them in if you want to. But I mean, some of them are a little better than others as yeah, well. Like, the yeah. whale, whale's probably my least favorite. You just count to ten and stops the round. It might be good for somebody who's visually, like, skilled at the game, mm -hmm. as opposed to somebody who's sitting there looking for a long time. Whereas something like this might actually score you more points. That might be a better option. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. in, in general, it gives you a little bit of an advanced style of gameplay, but it's not, like, a huge amount of advancement. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you could probably play this on your... You could probably play with them on your first or even second game. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't I, I enjoyed this game quite a lot, actually. I'm not very good at it, but <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. It's a little puzzly, a little tricky. It's got that ocean theme, which I do like, and the theme fits in with the style of play that you're attempting to do, which is swimming down and looking down at the board. Yes. Uh, one small little qualm I have with it is as you're looking down at the board, trying to gauge what's, uh, what's underneath, if you're not careful, you might peer into somebody else's playing area. Oh, uh, this okay. is a prototype, however, so I, I don't know exactly how they might do any changes or not but yeah you have to make mm -hmm. sure that the, you're playing on a large enough table to where people cannot see your board utilizing these handy dandy little blockers but still when you're looking up 
And uh, the board's here. You're trying and to peer down into the ocean. You might actually <laughs> accidentally see it, so you have to be very, very careful not not to yeah. do that. And uh, that's probably my one little like. Yeah, my only thing is also having to do with it being a prototype version. I'm curious to see how stable the ocean like stand will be in the final version because we have a little oh, like a wooden one which is very nice very stable but uh looks like the final one might be cardboard so but oh okay. we'll see we'll i have see no how idea it, <laughs> how um, it holds up yeah these guys made magic maze and, and whatnot and all those games are high quality and thick so i i, I suspect there won't be any issues i mean you'll also want to keep note that these these things here need to be clean you know so yeah, yeah. as you touch them they're going to get with kids and grimy fingers <laughs> and that'll make it harder to see they'll get dirtier so hopefully these will be able to be cleaned and and, and yeah a little bit of yeah don't let cleaner. people play with cheeto dust on this specific game this is specifically not good with with i mean it's it's extra not good with cheeto dust but yeah overall dive is a really excellent little game if you enjoy ocean-based games you enjoy games with a little bit of a puzzler with a little bit of pusher luck a little bit of guesstimation visually really this is something quick to get to the table and play very easy to learn the rules very easy to something. understand yep. this game uh, mm -hmm. we got this game after the first round of play um well as she was explaining it to me i'm sitting there like wait i don't really get what you're saying as to how these bids work but once we played one round i'm like oh perfectly understand it mm -hmm. let's do this so you're using i get the it. tokens for two different things determining if there's a shark there and bidding so kind of have to ex explain that but it's nice it's good it's a good use of of having to only use one component for two things. And I also still lost, but that's okay. I still had fun with this game. So if you're interested in taking a look at the game Dive, you can go ahead and there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick this game up. I believe it's for available for pre-order and it will be coming out sometime this month. Uh, a game that has a wonderful little oceany theme similar to Callie's. So we just wanted to pump this one to show you guys how fun ocean games can be. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer for Game Review. If you are interested in Dive, please check out the link below. And if you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe and hit that bell notification button to make sure you see all of our reviews and content. And of course, if you do really like ocean themed games, puzzle games, family friendly games that also have some strategy, check out my game, Moonshell a Mermaid Game. It's on Kickstarter right now. We'll have that link in the description below as well. Thank you guys so much. And as always, I look forward to See you guys next time. And the Patreons. Here's the thing. <laughs> These guys are great. <laughs>